Welcome to the first edition of the Arena Conclave. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go over a few big ticket items uh, in here in the first edition, kind of give some status updates of what's been transpiring and uh, where we're at, and then also uh, make sure that we leave a little bit more in-depth stuff, for example, on the new release uh, when it comes to some footage to show what's going on with it uh, here for the next episode that will be coming up soon. So first of all, I'd like to touch on the fact that uh, recently we had a departure on the team. Eric has decided to move on to other endeavors and uh, other things going on with his personal life. We completely understand one of the things that I try to convey to people on the team is that life always does come first and sometimes it's difficult for people to disengage. So that all being said, we do wish Eric the best of luck in his endeavors in the future. We ask that anybody, um, you know, that knew that he was on the team to, you know, kind of leave him alone. Um, you know, don't try to PM him or DM him, you know, ask him stuff about this because he, you know, he's working on doing the things that he needs to do otherwise. So we know that another big item that's been on people's minds is the version 2 status, right? So, to be completely frank, version 2 has been tabled. Um, we had to table it for now for multiple reasons, but one of the primary reasons for it uh, is just the kernel in general. We were looking to move into the 4.14 kernel, however, um, after doing extensive testing and while we were doing build outs, etc., um, we were finding that there were glaring issues. Uh, first of all, for example, uh, Bluetooth. Um, we could have supported Bluetooth on this, similar to what we have in the version 1.x train. However, the problem with that is that you would actually have to go in and do a scripting option through our toolbox to switch depending upon what devices you wanted to have recognized. Um, that becomes pretty clunky, right, in execution if you really think about it, so not something that we really desire. Uh, what we were finding then as well as if you did that, for example, let's say you had uh, an 8-bit DOE controller Bluetooth and then you also want to connect up a PS4 controller Bluetooth for cooperative play. Well you wouldn't have been able to do that because how the uh, blue stack was compiling no matter what we were doing it didn't make a difference and um, we just were not being able to get it to play friendly we know that there is some issues with the bluetooth uh, the way that it is uh, however we do feel that there's a pretty good compatibility out there um, if you're using what's recommended for dongles um, recently we had a user tell us that they were using the Bluetooth dongles at cell with the 8-bit DOE controllers themselves and when multiple controllers are connected uh, after a period of time in some games or emulators that they're seeing some weird behavior so we may need to look into that however none of us on the team technically has those uh, Bluetooth adapters so testing that internally is, is really difficult to say the least um, you know, that, that kind of brings up the point that, uh, you know, through our Patreon, you know, not to get super sidetracked here, through our Patreon, we've been able to do, um, a few things that we would not have been able to do otherwise. So the Patreons are greatly appreciated. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts, and I'm sure that the community will thank you as well. Um, you know, things like the, uh, Xbox controller support testing that we did, um, with the Xbox 360 and using the wireless dongle um, that's required for those connecting to a PC or a Linux. Uh, there's also the uh, ongoing work that we have going on with the AimTrack light gun kit. Um, Easy Hacks has been able to publish some information on it and some systems are currently supported and we're hoping that more will come down the road. Um, so talking about controllers, right, that was another huge issue with version 
4.14.x with the kernel. Um, even now, Maverick over at um, OGST, he's taken a look into it and he's confirmed the exact same things that we have been talking about here um, actually for the last several weeks in discussions back and forth with Hard Kernel is that their uh, offering that comes with the N64 case, right? Those games sir. Uh, G3 controllers, the USB ones, yeah, they don't even get seen by the kernel at all. Um, we had some external resources take a look, um, you know, even through uh, Joy to Key, etc., trying to do JSON, a bunch of different things, right? Um, we've tried to investigate and we're just not coming up with anything solid. The problem is that it looks like X input is broken. Um, on that kernel and um, at least from what we get from uh, hard kernel for our base so not to dig too far into the weeds of that I'll kind of share a little bit in the fact that you know we use the base that's provided by hard kernel um, you know they do all the compilation for it and what it's supposed to be to support the different various bits of hardware on the boards so <clears throat> excuse me so that being said, we went back to them. They've confirmed there's an issue. Right now, they don't have an answer, and there is not a, an ETA uh, for resolution. However, um, we get that squared away, then we'll be a step closer to being able to move over to the 414 kernel. So, um, you know, that being said, that's, that's the status for version 2 itself. Um, Another development that recently came about is that we are going to be publishing a subpage on our website soon, which is going to be a Patreon subpage. The reason why we have to do this is because of the fact that Patreon has reached out to me directly and stated that we are breaking their terms of service because of the fact that we have um, the giveaways right um, depending upon if you're in the 32-bit tier or the 16-bit tier and so therefore it gives the impression that you need to pay in order to be able to be entered however what we're trying to say is is that you know depending upon the situation you know we need may need to buy different resources none of us on the team have the ability to just continue to build up all this stuff right I mean, uh, let's face it, this hobby can gobble up your space faster than you can blink. So that being said, um, what's going to happen is, is uh, we will be working internally to create a Patreon subpage to point people to, and then you can sign up for the Patreon from there. And in there, we will get more in-depth on the details of what's included in the various uh, Patreon tiers. And then that way I can back out what I have for information and make it very... Uh, basic on the Patreon page. Um, so, I'm sure at this point you're saying to yourself, well, wait a minute, you said there's an upcoming release, what's going on? You're saying version 2 is tabled, etc. Um, so, the next release that's going to be coming will be coming soon. Uh, we will be providing the version information, of course, that will be forthcoming. However, that being said, I kind of want to go over some of the uh, upcoming release tidbits. If you've been following us on Facebook or on Discord, or if you're a Patreon, you'll see that we have uh, been sharing a lot of information, but I just kind of want to go over things as a, a summary, uh, just a basic idea. You know, we've been working really hard this last six months. Uh, we've had, you know, some different things going on that kind of slowed us down, life gets in the way, etc. but we're pretty excited on this. So, um, due to the amazing support, not only through Patreon, but then also through other donations, uh, we were able to procure a developer, right, for the Saturn, which that's kind of been discussed uh, at length, and we've been giving out little, you know, teasers and, and gameplay and things like that, but, um, that being said, yes, we have Yabin Sanshiro, and I apologize if I hacked up that uh, name, but it's Yabin Sanshiro that will be natively installed for Saturn emulation. Uh, we found that the mid-res option is the best for performance. However, your mileage may vary, and you might be able to switch, depending upon game, um, up to 
the high res. However, the image will release with it installed at, at mid res as the default. Um, Drastic, which you already know is uh, been available for version one one, that will be natively installed and is excuse me, and um, that is set as the default emulator for uh, the Nintendo DS. Right, so that's done. We've uh, resolved the issue in the ES systems config, and uh, you won't see the double uh, entry anymore, not have to deal with that if you've downloaded the version 1.1. Um, so talking about that real quick, another update is that we've also resolved the git reset hard uh, sequence that people have had to do, and um, so that's not going to be an issue for people anymore on updating and that's fixed, right, moving forward altogether. Um, we have had some cool developments happen with our 40O emulator um, and emulation. Our dev has been working pretty hard, and not just for us, but just 40O emulation in general um, with LR40O. And um, there are now some threaded optimizations, so you will find that 4DO is, excuse me, 3DO, jeez, that uh, 3DO is uh, much more playable and it should be more of an enjoyable experience. There, there's still a little bit of glitching going on or, or audio stutters here and there, but it's a definite improvement, so that's definitely really cool. Um, we also have LR Recast now installed natively, which for some people that will be an exciting development because you'll be able to map your uh, controls uh, through the uh, RetroArch uh, during your controller configuration, right? So when you, you first launch in, you know, you'll be able to have all that translate. Um, the more exciting piece, at least for many of us with this, uh, with the fact that the developer has recently um, taken a look and begun to, to uh, spin up more development and become a lot more active again is that the Thomas Wave and Naomi is now supported. So there's a lot of really cool games that you'll be able to play with those and we're really excited to be able to share that. Um, so let's see what else is there to kind of go over here. Um, the bezel project status, right? So um, with this update as well, we've moved into the 4.4.2 version of RetroPie. One of the things that people need to realize, right, is that we've had to fork RetroPie. So even though it is our goal to maintain as close as possible the same standards and feature set that RetroPie official has, sometimes there's just some development constraints that don't allow that or have not allowed it as of yet right so just want to kind of make you aware of that and in regarding the bezel project actually a very cool development is that um, I happen to be friends with a few of the guys over there in the project and um, we went ahead and put in a request and they've actually added native support so now what happens is that they don't, we don't need to specifically do anything in particular, right, for the bezel support per se. And, and we're testing it internally to be sure that we don't run into any problems. But essentially what happens when it, when it launches the utility is that because we have a different account naming standard, right, and just really quickly I'll touch base on that because we have a lot of new people that will come in and they'll be a little bit confused. Well, why don't you have the same account name? Well, when I started this over a year ago, um, I didn't realize that we were ever going to get to the point that we are independently. Um, and so that being said, um, I took a look at it as, okay, well, you know, the, the default credentials for RetroPie, it's, it's based around the Raspberry Pi boards. So having a username of Pi and a password of Raspberry just does not make any sense at all. So. That's just a personal opinion, and that's how I kind of started things out because this is almost kind of more of an experiment, right? Um, the plan was to provide as much um, information as possible to RetroPie Official, which we will be doing, by the way. Actually, recently started active conversations with um, them, and uh, we're going to be working on providing them access or at least uh, to be able to peer into our GitHub 
and to see what they can actually bake into more formal support um, for the XU4, which is actually, to me, really exciting. Um, you know, they do have a single XU4, but they just don't have the time. Um, you know, they've been developing so heavily for everything else. So that being said, getting back to the bezel project, what will happen is, is that it actually has an if statement in there now where it says, hey, if I see Pi Gaming, then cool, you know, I will work this way with this directory structure. Um, and it's just the username that's ch changed, right, primarily. So if it doesn't see that, then it goes to looking for Pi. So that being said, um, we're really excited. We're doing some internal testing with the Bessel project and, you know, fingers crossed it should be here in this upcoming release. Um, I'm actually considering doing um, two base images of the release just to make life easier or more friendly for people. Um, because of the fact that the Bessel project does add a few gigs um, for all those bezels and some people don't like to have bezels, right? Um, you don't get the performance hit on the XU4 that you might get on some of these other SBCs, but still, you know, um, everybody has their preference. So we don't want to make any presumptions. We already make a bunch as it is having so many emulators, uh, you know, natively installed compared to the official RetroPie build. So most likely we'll be releasing a um, initial base that the project's there, you can install everything yourself, but then I'm looking to install what might be considered to be a BP plus base image, right? Where it already has the bezel, bezel excuse me, bezel project stuff already integrated. Um, so now we kind of get to some more of the nitty gritty that um, people have been waiting for uh, for the last few months, and that's N64 case support, right? So yes, OGST did release their um, support out there. Uh, there's another distribution out there called Supremo Odroid, which if you haven't checked it out and you want to, um, I suggest that you do, especially if you're in a track mode fan. Um, they've done a bunch of work over there um, to with their team um, to essentially make a standalone track mode build. So once again, I know keep talking about not getting sidetracked, but there's just so much to discuss. Um, very quickly, the nuts and bolts of it is that you will never see a native RetroPie release like you do with the RetroPie official, right? That includes the ability to go over to a track mode because the only way that they were able to over there in Regilot's team to produce a good working image and it's stable um, is to have a standalone build. Uh, we did a bunch of investigation into it when we first started and we were just not getting anywhere close to the results that we really wanted to see. Um, you know, plus the fact that, you know, it is a little bit early, or excuse me, older version of, um, of the attract mode um, front end because it's 32-bit and the track mode's moved over to 64-bit as of, I think, a little bit over a year ago, a year and a half ago now. <clears throat> so that being said, um, they do offer support for the N64 case as well, so I encourage you to check that out. Um, you know, we try to be as transparent as open, you know, that there's different uh, versions of distributions out there for the XU4. You know, we're going to be looking to dip our toes into some other stuff. That's for another episode, video, however you want to call it. But N64 case for us, um, we had a member of the community. Uh, he goes by Keg on um, Discord, um, and he did a bunch of work to assist us. He came in um, and volunteered a bunch of his time. We're extremely appreciative. Um, you know, essentially what it is, is that it was all stepping stones to get to where we're going to be on this release, right? Um, uh, Luke Farnquar, I probably mispronounced his name because I've never actually heard him say his last name yet. Um, he did a bunch of code work. Um, Will I Am on Discord, who's a part of my team. Luke, of course, is part of my team, but uh, Will, he now goes by Will I Broke It, I believe, on Discord. Um, he did a bunch of code work, and um, Keg came in, did a bunch of work, uh, especially working hand-in-hand -hand with John Manning on the team. 
and it all was stepping stones to get to where we are now. Um, we now have um, a package of images that's going to come preloaded and we're going to be investigating possibly doing something similar down the road to like what they do with the ES Themes Gallery where uh, people could push up packages, right? Um, so for image art, and that could be really fun. Um, on this base release, it's going to have um, the splash, what I'm calling system splash art, right? And I will be um, showing that off here in uh, another video coming up soon. And, um, you know, there's a lot of questions, right? Well, what about other types of things like box art, etc.? cetera? Uh, we will be looking to do that. However, to be perfectly clear, the only way it will be supported is if you're using the hyperspin naming convention. That's something that game lists have been working towards now for a really long time. Um, and when I say long, you know, for me anyway, I've been doing this stuff now for about two years is when I started my... Uh, Retro Pi journey or my Raspberry Pi journey or just SBCs in general, right? So um, if if you don't have that naming convention in place, then uh, or at least at the directory structure that, for example, you see in the motion blue packages uh, from Dave Marty, um, if that's not there and that's not where you have your different images, then we are not going to be able to support it, right? Because there's just too many variables. So, um, with that being taken into consideration, we do look to be doing something along the lines of a menu for the screen, uh, most likely. Um, can't quote me on it for sure, but the intention is to have one where you could choose to present box art, where you could choose to present wheel art, where you could choose to present cart art, marquee, etc. Right? So you'd have a bunch of different variations that you could choose from. If you get bored with system art, you could switch over to box art or whatever. Um, right now, it's going to be a future situation on presenting system stats. We don't have that um, for this release, but it will be forthcoming. Um, that being said, another thing about the screen, like a lot of people don't realize, and, and I've actually said that I would share this in the video, is that, um, so, yes, you can display video with the screen. The thing is, is that when we were doing testing, we were finding that there was an unexceptional, unexceptional, amount of um, lag that was introduced with especially the more modern systems when they were running, right? Because essentially in order to be able to display a video and a looping video or a steady video, however you'd like to call it, um, you need to use an application to present that on the second screen, right? So you've got M player, VLC, you know, whatever you, whatever we end up having in there in place, right? Um, so what we were noticing is, is that with the screen running an active video, even if it was a looped video, right, of say four to six seconds, um, it was chewing up between 18 and 24 percent of the CPU. Well, in smaller systems, or excuse me, you know, more legacy systems, right, like let's say Atari 2600, you know, any of these emulators that don't really take a lot of grunt to move, um, stuff on the, the screen and also be able to run in the emulator, you know, that wouldn't necessarily be a big deal. However, once you start to step up into systems like the Nintendo 64, the Saturn, the 3DO, um, Naomi and Thomas Wave, uh, Dreamcast, etc., right? Um, you do notice it. And for me running this whole endeavor, um, some people may find that it's exceptional, but I, or acceptable, excuse me, I do not. So, uh, I nixed that. So, you know, uh, yes, you can present, uh, MP4 videos, for example, and in some future information, we'll see what we can do to put out on that. However, um, you know, like OGSTs already has that. I'm not completely sure. I think that, um, Supreme Odroid has it but you'll need to check with them on that. Maybe you can get a little bit more information and, and, you know, maybe as a community we can come together and kind of take a look or whatever. But, you know, if you do choose to go the video presentation route on the, the N64 case screen, uh, I just want to be clear that it's not something that we're going to help you troubleshoot, right? Because we, we've already done a ton of legwork on it. Um, you know, 
we do not want to put anything out there that we know is inherently broken or that we wouldn't want to play. And, um, you know, you can say we're conceited, say what you want about us, but, you know, we have what we consider to be high standards and we want to stick to those. So um, that all being said, now kind of also to take a look at another system that we're having supported is the PC-98 slash PC-88. Um, that emulation is now baked into the upcoming release. So if you're into one of those legacy systems, that's awesome. Um, and we've seen a little bit of enhancement as well with the Sharp X68000. Uh, there's so much to share, and this has already been a, a long video, right? I'm already pushing 26 minutes. So um, that being said, uh, once again, I want to thank everybody in the community for your support. You know, we may come off as, uh, you know, some real hardheads sometimes um, in Discord and in Facebook, but, you know, we really feel like we don't want to enable people to act entitled, right? You know, um, it does come off as being rather brash when you come into the community and right off the bat you say, oh, well, when is version 2 going to come out? Because version 1.1 one, one is buggy and, uh, you know, I don't want to use Recall Box, or I don't want to use Supreme Odroid, or I don't, you know, whatever. And it would be the same way for any of them, right? You know, I wouldn't want to see anybody coming into the group saying, hey, when is, you know, Supreme Odroid going to come out with their next release because this is buggy on or whatever, but it works in Recall Box, or it works in the Odroid Retro Arena edition of RetroPie, right? We, we don't, we don't accept that, and we don't allow it. Um, you know, when you come new into the community, we expect that if you want to ask questions, go for it. Um, but right off the bat, coming in saying something like that and not backing up what you're trying to say is, that's just not right. You know, it's a slap in the face to all the people, not only on our team, but in the community that has put a lot of time and effort into making gaming on these Odroid SBCs uh, as best as possible. So anyway, uh, I definitely appreciate your time. Uh, I hope that I didn't end up putting you to sleep in our first edition of the Arena Conclave, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Take care.